Now, our Lord, as we come to our studies, just pray, Lord, that you would be honored, uh, that uh, you would teach us, that you would encourage us and challenge us, and remind us of your faithfulness as we study the external evidences for your word. So, Lord, we commit all these things to you, and we thank you, we love you, and we praise you in Jesus' wonderful name. Amen. Amen. All right, go ahead and turn to 1 Samuel 16, or click there. We'll get there in just a few minutes. And uh, we are... Picking up in our series on the reliability of the Bible. Um, had you know, some evangelistic things and then Kevin did a you know, series. Now we're picking, picking this back up again and uh, trying to do it in a few weeks, uh, maybe three or four, we'll see. Um, so we're going to go kind of quick, but I still want to, of course, have discussion and <clears throat> talk about these things. It's important. And just as a reminder, there are three tests that determine if an ancient document is accurate or not. Uh, one is the bibliographic test, and that refers to the manuscripts. That's what we studied last time. Looked at the overwhelming reliability of the Bible when it comes to manuscripts, Old and New Testament. Uh, more manuscripts just for the New than for all other ancient documents combined. You know, to say that the manuscript evidence is not enough to support the Bible is, of course, wrong, and it just shows a bias against Scripture. Uh, and a recognition that someone's not going to be convinced of the truth. They've already determined not to believe. The second is the external test, and that's what we're starting tonight. Now, <coughs> this includes archaeology, uh, external documentation, of course, with this topic about the Bible, uh, events uh, that are contained in the Word of God that are mentioned outside of Scripture, uh, science even too. A lot of people don't think about science when it comes to what the Bible says, but it does talk about science. It's not a scientific book or a science book, but the science it talks about, of course, is accurate because God is the creator of science. And this external documentation that talks about people and events and other things too. You know, so those kinds of things are important. We'll start looking at that tonight. And third, though, is the internal test. The internal test. That deals with the internal evidence or the inter internal consistency of a work. And of course, for us, it's the scriptures. That's what we will be looking at sometime in the future. Uh, the themes, the ideas, the concepts, the information, to see if there's any internal contradiction within whatever writing that you're looking at. Now, we do know the Bible is a historical book, right? It didn't just, you know, pop into existence, you know, based on one person's imagination, you know, like the Book of Mormon or something, or you know, the Quran or something like that. Although some say even the Quran may have had <laughs> others involved. Yeah, it's only history. Yeah, yeah. And there's actually two different Qurans. It couldn't even lie. Yeah. But the events and the people and God's plan of redemption were and are being carried out in history. I mean, we're living in history right now. Believe it or not, however long the Lord tarries, in a few years they'll be talking about this year as history. And what took place. And if we're really old, we can look back and say, oh yeah, I remember that. I was there. And we can say, that's not exactly what happened, but <laughs> I was there. And you can say, that's fake news or that's true news. But we must also remember that the Bible is a spiritual book. It's a historical book, but it's also a spiritual book. You know, I can't prove to you and you can't prove to someone that, you know, the archaeology, this external documentation, science and everything... It can't convince them that the Bible is God's word. It won't. It's about faith. It is about faith. We can give external evidence for the reliability of it. That's what we're talking about. <clears throat> but we cannot convince everyone that it's God's word. Unless the Holy Spirit, of course, is working. Uh, and someone's willing to accept what it, the claims that it has. But nonetheless, these things are important. And God has chosen to reveal himself in history and given historical evidence to verify the claims of Scripture. And we talked about some of that with you know, the Dead Sea Scrolls and things like that. Because here's the thing. If the Bible is not historically verifiable and reliable, then it is spiritually flawed. Because God claims to be the truth. He's claimed to, you know, to keep His Word pure. So that's why this kind of topic is important. Now, just for a moment, I want you to consider this. Using nothing from Scripture with this illustration gives some evidence that the Bible is reliable using only outside sources. The Hebrew people. The Hebrew people? Okay, how so? 
group of people are people that existed according to scripture, which is not the Bible. Right. Uh, and then it takes us to the <laughs> tribes. You have the Jewish nation. The Jewish nation. They, are, they, they in themselves are one evidence that the Bible is true. And the land of Israel. The land of Israel. They had not been a nation for yep. 2,000 years. Yep. They were kicked out where of their land they, multiple times. Where are the Aztecs? Yep. Where are Aztecs the, are gone. Yeah, where are the Jebusites? Jebusites are gone. And the Pesites and the, the, the Pesites are gone. And the, and the, yeah, the Mosquitoites. <laughs> where are all these people groups yep. that existed that are gone that came back into their own land? Twice. Twice. <laughs> Speaking their same language yep. with their same currency. Yeah. Yeah. Same language, same land. Yeah. Believe so the land in what they believe. Too. Believe in what they believe. Four thousand years. Yeah, generally speaking. Well, generally speaking, yeah. <laughs> with some exception. So yeah. they still believe in the God of Abraham, Isaac, mm -hmm. and, and Jacob. Jacob. Yeah. Okay, so we have is the nation of Israel and the land of Israel. What else? What are some other evidences that you could give for the reliability of Scripture without using the Bible itself as, a, as an evidence? Well, Yeah, can you give a couple specifics? No. Okay. Gilgamesh. No problem. No, you're, 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 you're right. No, <laughs> you refuse Gilgamesh to do that. Great flood. You know, and uh, you know there are references to scriptural events uh, outside of the Gilgamesh epic, and uh, Lord willing, we'll talk about that sometime in the future. Sennacherib's prism, and we'll, we'll look at some of those things too. You know, anything else that you can think of? Anything else? They're constantly finding things in Israel that validate the Bible, mm -hmm. just like they found. It's on your paper here. They yep. found Pilate's stone yep. inscription. They found that he was a real person, but before they thought he wasn't real. Right. They keep finding coins dated back. Oh, yeah. Pictures of yep. like David on there, and they find inscriptions of David. I guess they never really questioned David. They questioned whether it's Well, they did question David, actually, yeah. for a long time. So they're constantly, as the Jewish people are digging up all this stuff, they're constantly finding out that there's evidence that mm -hmm. actually verifies the Bible. And also, the, the Bible is scientific, too, yep. because mm -hmm. science. Yeah. I guess it was Copernicus thought the, the, earth, the earth was flat, I think it was Copernicus. And the Bible actually talks about looking at looking down on the sphere of the earth and looking at all the ants. All the man's grasshoppers. The grasshoppers mm -hmm. So the Bible recognized that the earth was round, yep. even though man thought it was flat. Yep. Columbus thought he was going to fall off the end of the <laughs> yeah. earth that he went so far and everything. He did. He didn't. He did. Thank you. Uh, he didn't know where he went. Oh, I got that one. <laughs> <laughs> Just when you thought you got the right one. Yeah. Well, there is a group that believes that the earth is flat. Yeah, there's a growing group that believes that it's not flat. And, but yeah, Isaiah talks about the circle of the earth. He sitteth yeah. upon the circle of the earth. Right. You know, in archaeology, as you mentioned, there. I mean, they, even recently they found more towns, yeah. a Canaanite town they found. I think it was near Tel Aviv. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's a huge, and they just began exploring that area. 3,000 people, right? Yeah, 3,000 people. That live there, and all their. Three, three or 30. 30. 30,000, that's right, 30,000. So, I mean, there's multiple archaeological evidences. We'll talk about a few of those things, but there's so many things that we really can express to people who are in doubt about the reliability of Scripture. Now it's possible to do, but of course it does take time, and we need to learn. It does you know, takes time to be educated. And I do want to say this, you know, for everybody here and those listening and watching, you don't have to become an expert. You can you know, learn three or four or five things, and even if you don't have the opportunity to to use scripture, you can defend the reliability of the Bible using those things. But I would say this: you should use the Bible because it is a reliable text. And we've already established that, and. Don't let anyone tell you you can't use scripture. I mean, I know I did a few minutes ago, but that was just a, a different context. Because it is the word of God, and he uses it to pierce the hearts of people. And people don't want to hear it because it's convicting. Especially if they don't want to hear about Jesus. Especially if they don't want to hear about Jesus and sin. And he's the only way. Also, the first cha chapter of Genesis tells us that the Lord created man, created mm -hmm. the stars, the yep. moon, the universe. <coughs> yep. The animals. Yep. Well, it was either him or the alien. Yep. <laughs> yep. <laughs> that was the asteroid that mysteriously came out of nowhere. Or the, or the, or the, that was the, the dot that we don't know where it came from that exploded into everything. Yeah, it was lucky. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> the big bang that somehow spewed out 
Yeah, exactly. That everything goes a different direction, which is how it expands. Yeah, exactly. It is still the universe is expanding. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because it all makes sense. How do you get stars? Yeah, universe? that doesn't quite work. But the Bible is our sword, offensive and defensive. Now, as we look at this, we're gonna, here's the outline here. Uh, this is we're gonna look at and define the external test. Then we'll look at archaeology. We'll start in the Old Testament, go to the New Testament, then external documentation, then science, and then just looking at the importance of history and biblical interpretation. So we'll look a little bit at why it's important to understand the historical context of Scripture when you interpret it. So first of all, is the Bible reliable? Yes, it is, of course. And this comes to our A, the external test. Just give you a uh, illustration here. Uh, I was on a video shoot uh, one time and I uh, actually got to meet one of the former presidents. I'm gonna shake his hand. I got a picture with him, I didn't bring it with me. Um, so you can believe me or not. Now, if you don't believe me, I can bring the picture next time and show you. He was Photoshopped. You suppose Photoshopped? No, no, I, I'm not that good at <laughs> that for sure. Who was the president? Bush. It was Bush, senior. Bush senior. senior, George Bush senior. Uh, who was quite a funny guy, because it was at a, at a hotel event and he and actually another comedian were there and you know telling jokes and everything and um, we got to meet him as well as the other comedian and got pictures with him um, but that is an external verification of my claim you know picture you know and likewise the external evidence verifies what scripture talks about and what it says and sometimes we when we consider this um, we don't think about the external test but it's important and there's three areas we're going to discuss here. First of all, archaeology. I mentioned that a minute ago. It verifies the historicity of Scripture. Now, there would be a great problem if we read about a city called Jerusalem and there's no evidence for it. That would be an issue. But you can go visit it. And I would encourage everyone to do so if you can, if you have the money. Uh, so that's the first one. Next is going to be the external documentation that verifies the, also the historicity of Scripture. And then last, we look at the science verifies the accuracy of Scripture. Believe it or not, there are verses that talk about science. So first of all, archaeology. Now we're going to start in the Old Testament. The Old Testament. And this is where we come to David. And, and this was just mentioned a minute ago. Let's look a little bit at 1 Samuel 16, though. 1 Samuel 16. So I'll give you a minute to turn there or click there. 1 Samuel 16. We'll read just a few verses here. And uh, this is the account of Samuel anointing David as king. Now, so before he became king, before David and Goliath, right before that, as it's written. But in verse 1 it said this, The Lord said to Samuel, how long will you grieve over Saul? Saul had failed miserably more than one time. And God said, okay, I rejected him for being king. His kingdom is going to be taken away and given to someone else. <clears throat> Since I have rejected him from being king over Israel, fill your home with oil and go. I will send you to Jesse the Bethlehemite, for I have provided for myself a king among his sons. <clears throat> and then he asks, you know, how can I go? And he talks about the sacrifice. So he goes to Jesse's house and um, he says, okay, tell me, bring out your sons. So one by one they come out. You look at verse 6. When they came, he looked at Eliab and thought, oh, surely the Lord has anointed him before him. But the Lord said to Samuel, do not look at his appearance or on the height of his stature because I have rejected him. Now, that doesn't mean that God didn't like him, okay? It just means he's not going to be the king. For the Lord sees, as, not as man sees, but a man looks on the inward appearance. Man looks on the outward appearance, but the Lord looks on the heart. So his, Jesse's sons, one by one, come out. And then, there was this one son. Verse 11, then Samuel said to Jesse, are, are, all these, are all your sons here? He said, there remains yet the youngest. But behold, he's keeping the sheep. And Samuel said to Jesse, send and get him, for we will not sit down till he comes here. And he sent and brought him to, to Samuel brought him in. And now he was ruddy 
had beautiful eyes and was handsome. Now we know the Lord looks at the heart, but we also have a commentary on how handsome David was. And the Lord said, Arise, anoint him, for this is he. Yep, he was a redhead. Redheaded Jew. Yep. yep. <laughs> Verse 13, And Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him, that's David, in the midst of his brothers. And the Spirit of the Lord rushed upon David from that day forth, and Samuel rose up and went to Ramah. Now, for many, many years, people did actually question the reliability and the accuracy and the historicity of David. You know, a lot of you know, liberal theologians, particularly in the 19th century, oh, he never existed, there's no evidence outside of the Bible, uh, it's just a word, you know, he, he's a figment of imagination, he's not real. But then between 1978 and 1985, archaeology uncovered part of, first of all, the city that David conquered, made it his capital, called the City of David, right there at the foot of Jerusalem. Still called the City of David, by the way. Connected there. And sometimes in Scripture, the City of David is actually another name for Jerusalem. Depends on the context. But also for many years, people scoffed at the idea of David being real. That argument was silenced in 1993-1994. When an inscription was found at Tel or Mount Dan, D-A-N, Dan, Three pieces of stone were found, and on that stone was the inscription, House of David, three words in Hebrew. This is the first find that had his name on it outside the scripture. Now, I've got a book here that I want to recommend to everybody, and you can get them in, in pamphlet form too, Rose Book of Bible Charts and Maps and Timelines. There's a couple of different ones of these, but this one, it's very good, and this has numerous different pamphlets or information regarding scripture and they've they've actually got uh, a lot of different things this one though is archaeology in the bible and i know it's kind of hard for those to see it particularly <laughs> those who are watching my video uh, but this has 50 archaeological things from the old testament that have been found and one of these of course is this rock or three rocks rather of the inscription House of David. It's actually number 38 in this list. And of course, if you want, you can look at it later, but it shows the, the rock and it has it highlighted. And it says House of David. That David. <laughs> it's, I mean, it's, it's, it's there, which is actually two words in Hebrew, but you know, House of, whenever there's two Hebrew nouns together, the of is understood in the middle. And they found this and it shows he existed. He was a real person. He was king of Israel. He was in the lineage of Jesus. So that lineage of Matthew 1 and other ones, they're accurate. So David was a real person. Any comments or thoughts on that before we go to the next one? So that's David. David. Second, Israel is actually mentioned outside of the Bible. Israel is mentioned outside of the Bible. There's one called the Bernepta Stella. Stella is just a big stone. Uh, or Israel Stella. It's a carved stone slab, by the way. Uh, I've got another book here called Wonders and Discoveries of the Bible. And I want to show you a picture of that. It's on page 100 which is also a good book, by the way, for you to get. Let me just get to it real quick here. Looks like this. It's very, very big. <laughs> big black stone, looks like this. The Merneptah Stella, or Israel Stella. And it actually has a king on it and it talks about israel let me just read a little bit to what it says here israel is devastated having no seed that's the quote that's on there actually mentioning israel it's dated to about 1213 bc it's from egypt 
So it also means they're already in the land by that time, which means the dating of 1445 BC for the Exodus is the accurate date. So I mean, th those kinds of things are important because archaeology shows us these things. Yeah, yeah, that's another that's another one too. It was also called the Moabite stone or Misha Stella. And it tells about the Israelites. Uh, Genesis 19.37 references Misha or the king of Moab. He says he drove the Israelites out from the land. You find that in 2 Kings 3. Let me just show you a picture of that. It's number 37 in uh, this book here. And I know it's kind of small, but again, it's right here. It's there. Now, if you don't have the books, look for it online. You can find it online. Everything's online. And everyone's online, too, by the way. The Black Obelisk of Shalmaneser III. It's a six and a half foot tall, four-sided stone pillar dating to about 841 B.C. states this, quote, Tribute of Jehu, the Israelite. And there's a picture of Jehu bowing before a pagan king. You find that in 2 Kings 9 and 10. So again, I go back to this book of, uh, sorry, Rose uh, Maps and Bible Charts. And this is it right here. These two pictures. You see him there. He's bowing before a pagan king. Jehu, of course, is mentioned in Scripture. You know, so, I mean, Israel is mentioned outside of the Bible. You know, we talked about the land and the actual people themselves. But you look at these ancient obelisks and stone carvings that mention Israel. They existed then, and they still exist today. And God is not finished with them. Any thoughts about this one before we finish up tonight? This is, these are not the only ones, by the way. And we're not going to go through, through all 50 of these. You can do that on your own time. We're just hitting a few highlights. Any thoughts, though? Any? Uh... Have you heard about these before, by the way? Yes. Yes? Yes. Some of them. Some of them? Some of them? And, and there's a lot more. Oops, excuse me. <coughs> there is a lot more. You know, so, and like I said, we're just hitting a couple of them. So that you can think about this and say, okay, yeah, there's, there's, you haven't heard of the other, the Shalmanazer, the Black Obelisk, the Israel Stella, uh, the Moabite Stone, and most people are going to look at you like, huh? What's a Moabite? <laughs> what's, a Moabite? What's, yeah. what's a Stella? You know, they won't know, and then you can tell them. You know, this shows that Israel existed and they were in the land that the Bible says they were living in. And you say, well, it's not true. Well, then you're just being foolish. And showing your own bias against reality. You know, contrary to popular belief, we don't create reality. No. No. And the problem is um, a lot of the errors are destroying a lot of the uh, yes. evidence. Is like archaeology <laughs> evidence. Because a lot of this, some of this stuff is found in the junk piles where the yep. Arabs were actually yep. cleared out the land and just put it aside and they find these pieces. I mean, yep. the Israelis go through the garbage or the stones and everything and try to look for this stuff. Yeah. So they're trying to destroy all the evidence and Israel's trying to find it all and put it back together. That's one of the yeah, problems. That's true. That's true. Well, not only are they destroying Israel, they're destroying all of the Middle East. Well, that's true. Yeah. And they're annihilating. Well, they're trying to, uh, generally speaking, the Arab community, Muslim community, is trying to erase Israel's existence. And, and that's they're part of it. trying to erase history. Yeah, yeah. And create their own. Yes. That's I'm another topic. Uh, yeah, it's another topic, though. Uh, but any other thoughts about this when it comes to Israel being mentioned outside of Scripture? You know, why would that be important, aside from the fact that it shows the reliability of Scripture? Because they're there today. Because they're still there today. Yeah. Just what we said earlier. You know, again, it shows that God is at work that he has a purpose and a plan that they existed then and they exist today and they will exist in the future despite what governments and people are trying to do to eradicate them even in this country Egypt is there today Egypt is still there yeah. and they'll play a part in times 
it's not only biblical history that's being destroyed today, it's any kind of historical, yeah. anything that happened in the past. I, if you, I was looking at a thing online the other day, and they were questioning the, the Copernicus, did he ever exist? Mm -hmm. Did Galileo ever exist? <laughs> did Plato ever, I mean, the question, did Shakespeare ever exist? Yeah. I mean, there's all these things saying that, well, these people never exist because there's no evidence. Well, we didn't have a, we didn't have the news in, back mm -hmm. in those days. And yeah. And didn't so, have social media back then, so obviously. And they're trying to destroy <laughs> all the American, everything, everything that's, that's, yeah. that we've known for centuries is being mm -hmm. destroyed today. And the question is, and so that they also do the Bible. Well, they, yeah. The Bible, they have to destroy, and then they have to rewrite history for yeah. us to say, you know, well, this stuff never happened. Mm -hmm. And that's part of the spiritual battle that is taking place in the world today, which is another reason why understanding this is helpful because this shows objectively what did occur and then we can look at scripture and say, okay, well, what it says is true and therefore we need to be careful about the other eradication of history that's taking place. So there's an application for you know, what we're studying today and how important it is to know history, real history, you know, whether it's biblical history or American history or wherever you live, it's good to know where you came from. You know, as, even as families, it's good to know, our, you know where we came from. It's helpful for that. Any other thoughts before we finish up? Right. Well, let's go ahead and uh, close in, in prayer, and then uh, we will be dismissed. Again, our Father and God, we thank you for your word. We thank you, Lord, that it is reliable. And I do pray, Lord, you would give us opportunities to talk to people and, and tell them, you know, first of all, about Jesus and salvation. But if they do have questions, let us remember the things that we're going to study. To tell them about these you know, stellas and obelisks and the mention of Scripture and outside of the Bible and, and the David in Scripture and all these other things that we're going to talk about. So use this, Lord, to strengthen our own faith. But also use this, Father, to remind us how important history is, particularly biblical history and Israel. And as so many turn their back on Israel today, Lord, may we not be counted among them. Are they perfect? No. Do they do everything right? No. Yes, they are very secular. But you still have a plan and purpose for the nation. That is very clear. So we thank you for that. And I just pray, Lord, that uh, you would help us and that you would also, again, fulfill your will to be done in the prayer request that we have already stated. And uh, we thank you that you hear us, that you love us, and uh, bring everyone back on Sunday and also next week for your glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. Have a blessed evening, everybody. David, question whether Mohammed ever existed. Yeah. They do. <laughs> I thought they that do. was interesting. I need questions. Did you? Let us know. I don't know. I don't know.